Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Uh, just one verse this morning uh, as I, I preach a sermonette to you, if I, if I can. I don't know if I can or not, but I'm going to try to. And then children, if you uh, want to be dismissed, we have a uh, service. Uh, I think someone will help you with that in the back there. Um, uh, we love the, all the little children. I'm so glad that, that Jesus loves the little children. Amen. I'm, I'm glad that I'm his child. So let's, let's look at a verse. Uh, we pr probably know this verse by heart. Hebrews 11, verse 6 this morning. And uh, I want to read it together out loud. Uh, maybe if you could, uh, um, maybe if you could uh, stand with me one, more, one last time. I won't ask you to stand again after this. And let's just honor the word of the Lord this morning. Let's honor that. You know, Hebrews 11, 6, we'll read out loud with an outside voice. I don't want to read it by myself. Okay, and then if you read it out loud, I know you at least read one verse this week. Amen? So God is working all the time. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. Now pause there for a second. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is... Pause. And that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you touch your word. I ask that you bless us, Lord. You open up our eyes, our ears, our heart, Lord, that we might see, hear, know, and understand something new from the word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, on your way to your seat, just tell your, tell your neighbor, I'm going with or without you. Okay? <laughs> Amen. God is good. <laughs> I want to talk to you just for a few moments about faith, okay? I want to talk to you about faith. And faith, uh, we understand that uh, with faith we can please God. Without faith we cannot please Him. Amen? Isn't that powerful? Just think about that. So yeah, there are two kinds of people in the world. There are people with faith and there are people without faith. Amen? There are people who are pleasing to God and those that maybe aren't so much, okay? Now I'm going to tell you right now, though, that every single one of us, not, not, not a single person, not a single soul in all of the world, because Jesus came to, for all of us, amen? Whosoever will. There, the, the door is wide open. And I think that the church should be more inclusive and less exclusive, amen? I think that we should have the doors open to, to the neighborhood. I think we should yell out the door today and say, hey, Jesus loves you. I think that my mouth... My life should declare that there is a God in heaven, amen, who has set his sits on the throne. And, and when I whisper the name of Jesus, he whispers to God and says, Pastor Everett is speaking. <laughs> and I think God wants to talk to us, I mean, amen. I think God wants to transform our life. I think God wants to stir up some stuff inside of us, amen. And I don't think we always like what God does. I don't know if it's just me, but I don't think we always like when God comes and messes up our life a little bit. Because we're like, I don't know, God, I don't know if I understand what you're doing. And, and pretty soon we put the brakes on and we go, well, I'll, yeah, I'll take a break from God because he's a little too invasive in my life. He's going to get all up in my thoughts and in my heart, in my relationships, and everything's going to start changing. And I don't know if I, maybe I just like it the way it is. And uh, even if it's not the way I like it, I still like it that way because it's always the way it's always been. And I can just trust in, in my dysfunction a little bit. And I can trust that, that if I stay right there, I'll always be the same way. And, 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 and even though I don't like it, I still am happy in my unlike, okay? And, uh, <laughs> you know, the other day, uh, someone unliked one of my videos on Facebook, okay? Because I, I couldn't believe it either. I was like, I was like, are you serious? And then they wrote a little paragraph and they said, they said that I didn't understand nothing. And I said, it's true, I don't. I don't understand anything because I need wisdom from God, amen? I need, I need long suffering of God. I need the love of God to flow into my heart, into my life, and to, and to open my mind, open my heart. That's why I pray that, that dumb prayer that I pray every time that I get ready to stand behind this pulpit is because I desire to change. Amen. I desire for something new to happen. I desire for God to have free reign in my life. I don't want to be the same anymore. I'm not happy the way it was. Yesterday is not good enough for me. The good old days is not the good old days. I'm going to tell you, the good old days are still in front of us. We still got a purpose. We still got a destiny. We still got a hope. We still got something in front of us that we should get excited about. Woo, I'm spitting already. I love it. <laughs> but I, I just want to talk to you about 
faith, what happens when faith looks like a test to us? What happens when faith looks like a test? You know, I remember uh, Abraham and I, uh, uh, we're in a series called Rewind, and if you don't understand what that means, I'll, I'll explain it to you just for a second. Uh, this is take five, but I, I went, we went back and we started to look at some of, the, some of the series that we had, and this message comes a little bit out of Accelerate, and I have a hard time re-preaching an old message, so, so I take the message and I look at it, but, but, but this, mes- <laughs> this message was really a struggle for me, I'm going to tell you, because I couldn't go back to Accelerate the series and pull out one thing out of there that I could say okay I'm going to talk about this I'm going to talk about that but this message is about faith and accelerate is really about faith so I just said I I just listened to God and God said to me yesterday he said he said just go home he said I'm going to give you a message I'm going to teach you what to say uh, for tomorrow and I went home and I, I took a blank piece of paper and I just began to open up my my spirit and I said God I don't have nothing to say but I just want to say what you want me to say to this people that's in this room today because he knew you would be here amen he knew I'd be here he knew that there that each of us would be here in the exact same position that we are with the same trouble <laughs> and you might be sitting next to the trouble but I'm going to say you're right here in the right place amen God called you here he brought you here this morning he wants to do something different in your life he wants to turn you around amen set your feet upon a rock and establish your direction this morning that's what the word does but (laughs) I don't know what I'm talking about this morning but I'm just talking okay I'm just letting it go okay I'm just gonna let it rip this morning I'm not gonna hold anything back from you this morning because I only have a few moments but I want to tell you (laughs) Abraham was just like us okay he was just like us he was doing his life his way he found himself in a position because his dad brought him to a town little town somewhere called uh, two letters uh, or I think was the name of the town but he was like there and he was like I don't know what I'm here for but my dad brought me here and then pretty soon he heard a voice of God he heard a voice of God and he and God said <laughs> I always like when God speaks because he speaks in a low baritone voice in my my mind but I don't know what he speaks in your mind he might be in a high voice in your in your mind but when God speaks to me he says he says pastor Everett or he says Everett or he says what are you doing or but he says it like this he says he says he says he said Abraham get up out of that town and go to a place that I will show you a place whose builder and maker is God, that his foundations were not dug by you, amen? He's going to take us to a place, amen, that he has already prepared for me. He called Abraham just like he calls you and I today. And Abraham was ready because he heard the voice of God. He was ready to receive a promise this morning. Can I just tell you about a promise? We, we are living with the promise this morning. Come on. We have faith to believe that Jesus died for us and he come to live here in, in my heart. Amen? Amen. He come to live in my heart. You know, uh, next week we're going to start a brand new series, okay? And I'm going to talk about that, that a little bit in detail about how we are the house. Amen? We're a house. And I don't know what the sermon series is going to be called yet exactly because I have like four names for it. But it's about, it's about the house. Amen? It's about what's in the house. And it's about, it's about what God is going to do in the house or should do in the house and, and how that looks in my, in, my, in my life and how I walk that out. How do I walk around uh, the house and being in the house? You know, what's in the house is important. And, 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 but we have the promise already in us. Uh, you know, I, I was... I was uh, Sometimes when God calls, you know, I remember when God called me to preach, I was 11 years old, and I don't know nothing about nothing, okay? I didn't have a girlfriend yet. <laughs> Come on. I, I didn't know nothing about being married. I've been married almost 34 years, okay? And Joanne has had to put up with a lot for me, okay? But I know nothing about nothing. And, and I, I remember in the back of my dad's van one day, we were driving. We used to go to Missouri all the time and back and forth. And uh, he drugged me everywhere when he would preach. And I, I, he preached so many messages, and I don't remember all the messages. I only remember one of them, really, because it was the only time I thought he was really good. All the rest of the time, I was like, I don't really know if he's any good at this. And uh, he was preaching to some people in, in uh, Missouri, and, and he was standing there with a pair of garage sale pants on he had purchased for 15 cents. And he ministered to the people for, because he had his pants on for 15 cents. He told them, he said, I have no pants. I stopped at a garage sale. They had just my size. They were 15 cents. And the people just got all excited. He had them crying. He had them laughing. I don't remember the context of the message other than that they were 15 pants, uh, a pair of 15 cent pants. But if a pair of 15 cent pants can bless somebody, amen, I want to go get me a pair of 15 cent pants. Because I don't know what I paid for these pants because Joanne always buys all my clothes. But because <laughs> I don't have any style or class or anything. But, but 
Someone, someone can provide for you whatever it is you need, whether it's a pair of pants or whether it's a whatever you need in your life. It might be a relationship problem. It might be a lack of relationships. It might be a finance problem. It might be a, a, a personality conflict, okay, that you have with God himself, okay? It might be a, it might be a, a, heart, a heart issue. It might be a health issue. It might be a whatever kind of issue. But I'm going to tell you today, I have the promise, and so do you, inside of you. And I, I believe it's time for the church, amen, to access the promise that we already have received into our life. And it's accessed by faith, okay? With, with faith, it's possible, come on, to please God. Without it, it is impossible. Amen. We talked about that just a couple of days ago about how that the man had the, the son that needed something from Jesus. And, and, and Jesus said, if, if you can believe all things are possible to him that believeth. And the man says, he says, I believe, Lord, help thou my unbelief, he said. And he stood there in the middle between belief and unbelief. And I don't know, maybe if you're not going to be honest with me this morning, uh, but many of us go through life between belief and unbelief, amen? We, we, we confess it, but we don't live it, amen? We, we talk about it, but we don't really believe it in our heart. And I'm, I'm going to tell you that, that in the middle of that, in the middle of those two things, that spectrum that we live in, the help is in the house, amen? The help is already here with us, amen? I will lift my eyes to the hill, the psalm says, right? The hill, the, the Calvary where Jesus died for us. I will lift my eyes to the one who gave himself for me, to my salvation, amen? That's where my joy comes from. That's where my hope comes from. It comes from someone other than myself, amen? I can't do it without Jesus. I can't, I can't walk a day forward without him. I need him, I need him, I need him. I need help, amen? I wonder if, if I could get a witness of someone that would say, you know what, I need help. I need help, amen? We need Jesus, amen? We need him in our life. We need him all up in our business. We need him all up in our mind. We need him all up in everything that we're trying to do or accomplish in life because it's not even my destiny, not even my purpose that matters. It's because God called me to some place, amen? He's taken us somewhere. And I'm just going to tell you, I wish I was standing in the middle of a house where there's a bunch of people in here that believed that God was moving us somewhere, that we were going to move with him, that we could, we could answer with Abraham this morning and say, I declare that I will move. I will pick up. If God says pick up, pack up, leave, I will leave. And I'm sorry, Joanne, but I might have to go. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not leaving her. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but, but I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. And I wonder if we could just say that today. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go somewhere. I'm not going to stay where I'm at. I'm not happy. I'm not satisfied. I want to move. I don't want to stay where I am. Woo. But we, we have been given a promise, but often in, our, in my life anyways, it looks like a problem. My promise looks like a problem. You know what, God? You promised to make me uh, some big preacher, but he, but he gives me people. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you this morning, he gives me people and they stand there and they look at me and they go, and I go, I can't even get them to move. So you know what I did? This is what I did. I'm going to tell you, I'm just being honest with you. I, I, I went to the basement of my house and I set the pulpit up uh, on an old plank board between two ladders because I didn't have no money. I set the, port, the board up there and I set the Bible up there and I preached to the wall. I figured if I get the wall to start to crack, maybe someone else could start to crack behind, behind the pulpit, amen, one day. But I'm going to tell you that you got to start to practice. you got to start to believe what God is doing more than anybody else. It's not what they say that matters. It's not at all what they say that matters. It's not what they believe that matters. It's what you believe this morning. That's what faith looks like. It, looks, it, it comes out of you in belief, amen? And it comes out of you in action, in moving, in being something different, amen? I want to move. I want to be something different. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, see, when we believe... Oh, I'm preaching good. My heart's beating fast. <laughs> Woo! See, when we believe something, we form a contract with God this morning, and he, He's going to do it. <laughs> Come on, He's going to do it, because faith is how we honor Him. That's how we move in, in the spirit realm or any other realm. It's going to do it when we believe something inside of us and begin to live it out. Amen? <laughs> I wish I could just lift my hands and say, you know what? You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. <laughs> Before all things that happened that in my life that I don't like to happen, he was worthy of it all. After all the things happened in my life, when I get to the end of my life, I even asked Joanne that the other day. I said, Joanne, if I died, would you marry again? And she said, well, I'd wait two weeks or so. But, 
And then she said to me, she said, she said, if I died, would you, would you, would you marry again? And I said, mm-mm, no, mm-mm. not right away. Because <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm just smart. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I said to her, I said, babe, I said, there ain't nobody else in the world that ever could be like what you are because you're just so special. And, and, and I, I think she believed it. I think I sold her on it. But, but, but after everything, after everything happens in my life and I, I kick off, because that's what I want to do. I want to preach a message and I want to die right after that. So I, I can say I go out doing what I love to do. And I, I, just want to, I just want you to know that after my day is over, after my life is over, God is still faithful. Amen. Amen. How come I can't trust him in the middle though? Because in the middle we're like, we got all of the answers, I think. I think that's what it is. I got the vision. I got the personality. I got the, I got the plan. I wrote it all down. And God isn't following my plan. And I'm getting, I'm getting excited and discouraged and upset. And I, I ride this roller coaster instead of just, you know, God, you got that. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do what I got control over. And the only thing I got control over this morning is this. You're worthy of it all. I can feel the presence of God right now. You're worthy of it all before beyond above every all of my understanding all of my hopes all my dreams all my personality all my influence all the things that i think is so important all my money all my cars i don't have any of that any of all those things but i'm gonna <laughs> all of that stuff come on all of that stuff is just stuff if i got the promise inside live out what we have inside amen and then take it and offer it to somebody else Come on, take what you got. If you got something so good, go give it away. Come on, go give it away. You're already giving away stuff all the time anyways. You're giving away everything you got. Start giving away something else, amen? Something else that God ought to be birthing something inside of you that's worthy of somebody else's attention this morning, amen? Because somebody needs what we have. And if we don't give them what we have, who else is going to do it? Why did God call you? Why did God bring you here? Why did God save you if he doesn't want to use you? Come on, he wants to use you for something. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you ever seen that, that commercial where they, they unscrew the top of somebody's head and someone reaches over there and they go, hello, 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 hello. See, Jesus should come out of each of us. Amen. Amen. Jesus should come out. My faith should show up. I don't have money. I believe God to give me some money. 15 cent pants. Okay, whatever it is I need, God's going to provide it. Yeah. Amen? If I do it his way, he'll, he'll pay it. If I do it my way, I pay it. Amen? Come on. If I'm going to do it God's way, he's going to pay for it. Amen? Amen. Uh, uh, legal, I, I can't even talk about this this morning. I'm going to skip something, okay? Skipping right over something. And I'm, I'm going to talk, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about impossible. Impossible, the word impossible. It, it, possible is believe. It is possible when I believe. What, what is impossible is possible. I got to say it right. <laughs> what is impossible is possible when I believe that God is. Okay? What is impossible is possible when I believe that God is. And often in my life, it's just in my life, okay, I get stuck. And I, uh, from, from this series, Accelerate, I had this little thing that I was talking about. I said, poor people talk about money, right? What are you talking about? What's your biggest problem? <laughs> poor people talk about money. Rich people talk about stuff. The stuff is what possesses us often in life. And wealthy people invest. And I declare to you over this, this congregation this morning that we are so wealthy Amen. with what God has sown inside of us Amen. that we should be investing in other people Amen. and taking, taking concern over, the, over the, the hearts and minds of people that are at our workplace, at our schools, right? At, 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 as we walk down the street. What, what is it that, that consumes you so much? And it ought to be kingdom stuff. I'm going to tell you this right now. It ought to be, I have been purchased. I am bought and paid for. 
All of my heart, all of my life, all of, my, all of everything I have is bought and paid for, and I am going to give away, amen, every single bit of it. Amen? Because you can't outgive God. That's right. You can't? Right. Come on. I ain't talking about dollars or money. I'm talking about, I'm talking about what wisdom did God give you today? What did you read in the Word today? What did you get from worship day? What did God say to you? And, and when is it that I begin to let that flow through me to somebody else? I, you know, whenever God gives me a revelation, every time, I always try to give it away immediately, okay? Because I don't want to save it for next Sunday, okay? Because I'm saving my revelations for next Sunday. Guess what happens? God's going to stop giving me revelation. I want another one, amen? And God is wise and, and full of wisdom and full of knowledge and full of everything. I want it to flow, amen? And I want to give it away immediately. Start giving away what you have. Start giving it away. Cause, I don't know, maybe, maybe, I, maybe, I don't, I, I, maybe I'll just say it like this. You know, the, the immigration office of the kingdom of heaven is open today. <laughs> you know, if you're a, a U.S. citizen, no matter where you go in all the world, you're still a U.S. citizen and you still have rights this morning. And no matter, no matter if they, they don't like it, they, don't, they like you, don't like you, if you're a U.S. citizen, you are a citizen of the United States of America, that means you have certain rights, right? And, 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 and given to you by this, because of the government, because of the, this country living. But we, we worship a God who is bigger than the government. <laughs> Hello, we have an, I have an announcement. It, your, your pres, our president is Donald Trump, but we have a God who is above Donald Trump this morning, amen? We have, we have a God who is above every other single king, queen, uh, uh, prime minister, uh, uh, president, congressman, every, every police officer. Amen. I, I, ser I serve and worship a God who is above all of those things. He is above only. Amen. He is higher. He is greater. He is stronger. And I, I don't think we understand it because we, <laughs> we get so depressed. I don't know, may I just speak to myself. I'll turn around and talk to the choir. But I just get so depressed. And we think that so many things are impossible in our life. And God, will, God, I don't understand, God, how come this never happens? How come I'm always in this place? Why can't I ever move? And, 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 and why does the impossible always hold me back from what is possible in, if I would just add faith? Okay? Add faith. Add faith. Can, can I just read a list? I'm almost done. I'm almost done, I promise. I just want to read a list to you. If I asked you this morning to hold your hands out like this and put in there, in your mind, put in there uh, what faith is and tell me what it looks like to you. Describe for me faith. Describe it to, to me. Describe it to me. And, and what does it look like? And... and just read a list. I, I'm just going to read a list, okay? Because we know Hebrews 11.1 1 says without faith, uh, 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 faith is the, sub I was reading 11.6 again, sorry. 11.1 uh, uh, says faith is the substance. Uh-oh. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Amen? It goes on to say that the world was made uh, by things that we don't see. Invisible things make visible things. A a amen? So, so, so the world that we look at is, is, an, is made of invisible things. It's made from the Word, amen? The Word of God. The Word of God proceeds forth from, from His mouth and, and, and speaks. And, I, and, and then there's a list, and, and, and I just want to read a list to you, okay? Because we don't really read this part of the, uh, uh, Hebrews 11 very often, 33 through 40. Check out this list, okay? I just check out this list. It says, uh, it's, it says, uh, who through faith, I'm in 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tor tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might, I wish I, wish I could have that kind of faith, it's like, it's like, I feel uncomfortable, Lord. I don't, I don't understand why, why people are picking on me, God. <laughs> but these guys died and didn't accept deliverance. They said their faith was more important. 
that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings. I mean, that's worse than Facebook post bashing, okay? <laughs> come, come, come on, come on, I, nothing. They can talk, they can say whatever they want to say. People do it all the time. People don't even, sometimes don't like it. I'm, I did a blog one time, and the only one that liked it was my mom. <laughs> I, I, and I kept doing it. I just kept doing it, and she would like it every single time. Nobody else liked it. And I was like, I don't know if I got a gift or not. <laughs> okay. But if my mom loves it, that's got to be good. <laughs> so, 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 so <laughs> I forgot where I was at. Okay. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. You ate moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted. Uh, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, were destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. <laughs> they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all of these having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Can I mess with you just for a second? Did someone write a report about you? What did it say? What did it say? I don't care what you're going through. There's no excuse to not use faith to be better. Amen? I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care how you feel about it. I don't care what they say. I don't care if they, they shoot us dead. My hope, my faith, my, my, it's a privilege to carry the promise into my troubles. Amen? It's a privilege of mine as a Christian, as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, to, to be Christ now. Amen? I, I, I just got one more part. I'll let, I'll let all the rest of it go. I just I got a lot going on here, okay? And it's really hard for me not to talk the whole thing out, okay? It's really hard. But I want to tell you, just, just let me tell you this, amen? So, 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 did, there's this guy, and, and I, don't even, I don't even know where the verse is right now. I can't, I can't remember it, but this, it's in, it's, it's Bar, Barak, okay? Barak. It's a little guy in the list of people, because we can go through the list, and there's, there's a bunch of people in the list, and it talks about, it talks about uh, uh, people that we know. Uh, uh, Noah and Abraham. Noah built an ark when there was no, no need for an ark in the middle of a desert someplace. Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Esau, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Samson, Barak. I love the story of Barak because Deborah was judging Israel. And Barak, she said, Barak, go out there and take some guys and go, go defend Israel. And, and, and in Judges 4, verse 8, and you can read the whole story. I don't have time to go there all through that. But see, see uh, I, I can testify that God is good to me. But Barak, she, Deborah, he said, I'll go if you go. He said, I'll go if you go, Deborah. That's what he said. And, and, and she said, I'll go. And she said, but I'm going to go, and you're not going to get the credit for it. There's going to be a, someone else get the credit for it. And I, I just had to say that word, Barak, there, because often in our life, in my life anyways, I think it's important to understand that you can do a lot of stuff if you're not afraid of who gets the credit for it. Amen? And faith, my faith, is going to make me move and expect you know what, God? I don't need the credit. I want you to get the glory. You, you know, and that's, that's faith, see? That's faith. What's faith? If I could show it to you in, in, a, in a nutshell, if I could just give it to you. If faith is tangible, it looks like someone else getting the credit for it. Jesus gets the credit. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. He's the one that died for me. Amen? And amazing things can happen if you don't care who gets the credit. <laughs> You know, the, the enemy in that story, by the way, had 900 chariots. And, and it didn't matter. 900 chariots is nothing. It, it, it looked like something, but it was nothing. And, and I just want to, I want to, I want to just wrap this up, a little talk up just for a second, okay? And I want to, I want to, I want to look at a verse just for a second. 
in Romans 5, verse 1, if you could look there for a second. And I, I had them to put up on the screen. I didn't put it in my notes. And I wonder if we could just read it together. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now just think about that verse for a second, okay? Just think about that verse for a second. And it says, uh, we know that, that faith is a substance, right? And, and I was just thinking, and I don't, this is just me, but I was like, if, if, I had to, if, if I had to walk around the world, how long would it take me? And so I Googled it, because I'm not that smart. Okay, so I Googled it. And, and you know, you can, you can walk around the world, uh, it's like 24,902 miles at the equator to walk around, around the entire earth. And uh, I mean, you gotta, you, it's ocean and you have to be, heck, have a lot of faith to walk across ocean. But, but if you, it, it, at the average pace of three miles per hour, that's walking speed, right? And we're walking uh, eight hours a day, right? It would take you uh, 1,038 days, almost three years to walk around the earth. And I, sometimes in life, it's, at least with me, I'm only trying to reference some, some, some stuff and put some stuff in perspective for you. Okay, so, so three years, okay, to walk around there. And then I was thinking about light, okay, because we're light, right? And light travels really fast. I was gonna bring my laser pointer today and I forgot it. But if I turn on my laser pointer, okay, it would hit the back wall just like that, right? Boom, boom. And you know, uh, 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 if you travel at the speed of light, you could go around the earth, uh, 7.5 times in one second. Think about that. That's how speed of light. And speed of light is really fast. I just wonder what the speed of faith is, though. Because is it between the walking and the light speed? Okay, because we measure things in light speed, but even the sunlight takes around eight minutes to get from the 93 million miles away from the earth to hit the earth, about eight minutes. And, and I was thinking if I go just a little bit further with that, uh, we believe that when we die, we're going to be in heaven. Amen? And, and the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Just like that. To be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. And so when I, I believe that I'm going to be that fast in the presence of God. Amen? And I'm, I'm going to tell you, your faith, what is the speed of your faith? <laughs> What's, I, I don't know why I'm doing this, but what's the speed of your faith? And then, I want, can you put my verse back up, please? I, I, I just want you to put, put the verse back up. And it says, uh, I, 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 I like the first part where it has the, the comma there, but, but we have peace with God. And I wonder how many of us are living at peace with God in the middle of whatever's going on in your life at peace with God. What is the speed of my faith? <laughs> what is the speed of my faith? What, what is it? Is it 180, whatever? I don't remember. I'm not that smart. I don't remember it. But if God made everything that we see, including the, the trouble that I'm in, I may have messed up and made some mistakes, but he knew I'd be in trouble. And, and what is the speed of my faith, Right? Why is what is comfortable not faith? And what is uncomfortable? Faith. Because if I stay where I'm comfortable, I'm not using my faith. Come on. And I believe to this morning, God wants you to see what faith really is and have the guts to use it to change your report. Amen? Accelerate, Lord. Accelerate, Lord, what you're already doing. Accelerate it. Let me just pray. I'm going to pray and then, and then I'm going I'm to uh, ask uh, uh, Sister Pat come up. I'm going to get her mic. She's going to need a mic, uh, microphone. Let me just pray for us. Father, in Jesus' name, I know that the word of the Lord has gone forth this morning. 
I know that you are changing everything this morning. And Lord, we want to use faith. We want to use our faith this morning. We present to you, Lord, our faith this morning. And Father, we just want you to accelerate what you have already started in us. And Lord, we're, we, we, want to get, can, can, we just want to be at peace with you. We want to let you do whatever you want to do. We, we don't want a, uh, uh, a thought to rise up or a, 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 a posture to rise up or an old habit to rise up. And conf We confront those things right now in Jesus' name. And we, we bind it in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus over our hearts and our minds and our lives. And Lord, we take authority in the name of Jesus <laughs> we move in with legal precedence this morning against the device of the enemy and we take authority right now over it in Jesus name we have dominion you have authority we by faith access that authority and we 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 we, we just declare it right now I declare in Jesus name we just push back right now the power of darkness the, the schemes of the enemy. We push it back in our lives and we ask right now for heaven to come to earth and establish a new thing this morning. Father, accelerate our faith. Accelerate what we have, Lord. What we already have in us. The promise in us. And Lord, help us to have the guts. Help us to have the faith to live it out. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you just say amen with me? Amen. amen. God is good this morning. Amen.